बुक सेपियंस अ ब्रीफ हिस्ट्री ऑफ ह्यूमन काइंड बाय योवन नोवा हरारे पार्ट नंबर फोर द साइंटिफिक रेवोल्यूशन चैप्टर नंबर ट्वेंटी द एंड ऑफ होमो सेपियंस दिस बुक बिगेन बाय प्रेजेंटिंग हिस्ट्री एज द नेक्स्ट स्टेज इन द कंटिन्यूम of physics to chemistry to biology sapiens are subject to the same physical forces chemical reactions and natural selection processes that govern all living beings natural selection may have provided homo sapiens with a much larger playing field than it has given to any other organism but the field has still had its boundaries the implication has been that so no matter what their efforts and achievements sapiens are incapable of breaking free of their biological determined limits but at the dawn of the 21st century this is no longer true so homo sapiens is transcending those limits it is now be beginning to break the laws of nat natural selection replacing them with the laws of intelligent design for close to 4 billion years every single organism on the planet evolved subject to natural se selection now even one was designed by an intelligent creator the giraffe for example got its long leg thanks to competition between the cheek giraffes rather than to the whims of a super intelligent being proto giraffes who had longer necks had access to more food and consequently produced more offspring than did those with shorter necks nobody certainly not the giraffe said a long leg would air unable giraffes to munch leaves of the tree tops let's extend it The beauty of Darwin theory is that it does not need to assume an intelligent designer to explain how giraffes ended up with long necks. For billions of years intelligent design was not even an option because there was no intelligence which could design things. Microorganisms which until quite recently were the only living things around are capable of amazing feats. A microorganisms belonging to one species can incorporate genetic codes from a completely different species into its cell and thereby gain new capabilities such as resistance to antibiotics. Yet as best we know microorganisms have no consciousness no aims in life and no ability to plan ahead at some stage organisms such as giraffes dolphins chimpanzees and neanderthals evolved consciousness and the ability to plan ahead but even if a neanderthal uh, fantasized about fowls so fat and slow moving that he could just scoop them up whenever he was hungry he had no way of turning that fantasy into reality he had to hunt the birds that had been naturally selected the first crack in the old regime appeared about 10000 years ago during the agriculture revolution sapiens who dreamed of fat slow moving chickens discovered that if they mated the fattest hen with the slowest cook some of their offspring would be both fat and slow if you mated those offspring with each other you could produce a line of fat slow birds it was a race of chickens unknown to nature produced by the intelligent design not of a god but of a human still compared to an all powerful deity homo sapiens had limited design skills sapiens could use selective breeding to detour around and accelerate the natural selection processes that normally affected chicken but they could not introduce completely new characteristics that were absent from the genetic pool of wild chickens in a way the relationship between homo sapiens and chicken was similar to many other symbi symbiotic symbiotic relation that have so often arisen on their own in nature sapiens exerted peculiar selective pressures on chickens that cause the fat and slow ones to proliferate just as pollinating bees select flowers causing the bright colorful ones to proliferate today the 4 billion years old regime of natural selection is facing a completely different challenge in laboratories throughout the world scientists are engineering living beings they break the laws of natural selection with impunity unbridled even by an organism's original characteristics Eduardo Cax a Brazilian bio artist decided in 2000 to create a new work of art a a fluorescent green rabbit cax connected a french laboratory and offered it a fee to engineer a radiant bunny according to his specification the french scientist took a run of the mal white rabbit embryo implanted in its dna a gene taken from a green fluorescent jellyfish and voila one green fluorescent rabbit for lay Once for Jack named the rabbit Alba. It is important as possible to explain the existence of Alba through the laws of natural selection. She is the product of intelligent design. She is also a 
harbinger of things to come if the potential alba signifies is realized in full and if human kind does not annihilate itself meanwhile the scientific revolution might prove itself far greater than a mere historical revolution it may turn out to be the most important biological revolution since the appearance of life on earth after 4 billion years of natural selection alba stands at the dawn of a new cosmic era in which life will be ruled by intelligent design if this happen the whole of human history up to that point might with hindsight be reinterpreted as a process of experimentation and apprenticeship that revolutionized the game of life such as process should be understood from a cosmic perspective of billions of years rather than from a human perspective of millennia biologists the world over are locked in battle with the intelligent design movement which opposes the teaching of Darwinian evolution in schools and claims that biological complexity proves there must be a creator who thought out all biological details in advance. The biologists are right about the past, but the proponents of intelligent design might ironically be right about the future. At the time of writing, the replacement of natural selection by the intelligent design could happen in one, any of three ways: through biological engineering. cyborg engineering or the engineering of inorganic life sub chapter of mice and men biological engineering is deliberate human intervention on the biological level aimed at modifying an organism's shape capabilities needs or desire in order to realize some preconceived cultural ideas such as artistic predilections of eduardo cax there is nothing new about biological engineering Per se, people have been using it for millennia in order to reshape themselves and other organisms. A simple example is castration. Humans have been castrating bulls for perhaps ten thousand years in order to create create oxen. Oxen are less aggressive and are thus easier to train to pull plows. Humans also castrated their own young males to create soprano singers with enchanting voices. and eunuchs who could safely be entrusted with overseeing the sultan's harem but recent advances in our understanding of how organisms work down to the cellular and nuclear levels have opened up previously unimaginable possibilities for instance we can today not merely castrate a man but also change his sex through surgical and hormonal treatments but that's not all consider the surprise disgust and consternation that ensued when in 1996 the following photograph appeared in the newspaper and on television a mouse on whose back scientists grew an ear made of cattle cartilage cells no photo show was not involved it is an untouched photo of a real mouse on whose back scientists implanted cattle cartilage cells the scientists were able to control the growth of the new tissue shaping it in this case into something that looks like a human ear the process may soon enable scientists to manufacture artificial ear which could then be implanted in humans even more remarkable wonders can be performed with genetic engineering which is why it raises a host of ethical political and ideological issue and it's not just pious monothe- monotheist who object that man should not usurp god's role many confirmed atheists are no less shocked by the idea that scientists are stepping into a nature's shoe animal rights activists decry the suffering caused to the lab animals in genetic engineering experiments and to the farm yard animals that are engineered in complete disregard of their needs and desires human rights activists are afraid that genetic engineering might be used to create superman who will make serves to the rest of us jeremiah offer apocalyptic vision of bio dictatorship that will clone fearless soldiers and obedient workers the prevailing feeling is that too many opportunities are opening too quickly and that our ability to modify genes in it is outpacing our capacity for making wise and far sighted use of the skill the result is that we are at present using only a fraction of the potential of genetic engineering most of the organisms now being engineered are those with the weakest political lobbies plant fungi bacteria and insects for example lines of e coli a bacterium that lives e coli a bacterium that lives 
symbiotically in the human's gut have been genetically engineered to produce biofuel e coli and several species of fungi fungi have also been engineered to produce insulin thereby lo- lowering the cost of diabetes treatment a gene extracted from an arctic fish has been inserted into a potatoes making the plants more frost resistant few mammals have also been subject to genetic engineering every year that the da- dairy industry suffers billions of dollars in damages due to the mastitis a disease that strikes dairy cow udders scientists are currently ex- experimenting with genetically engineered cows whose milk contains lysostaphane a bi- biochemical that attacks the bacteria responsible for the disease the pork industry which has suffered from failing sales because consumers are wary of unhealthy fats in ham and bacon has hopes for a still experimental line of pigs implanted with genetic material from a worm the new genes cause the pigs to turn bad omega 6 fatty acid into its healthy cousin omega 3 the next generation of genetic engineering will make pigs with good fat look like child's play geneticists have managed not merely to extend six fold the average life expectancy of worm but also to engineer genius mice that display much improved memory and learning skills Walls are small stout rodents resembling mice and most varieties of wolves are promiscuous but there is one species in which boy and girl wolves form lasting and monogamous relationships geneticists claims to have isolated the genes res- responsible for wall monogamy if the addition of a gene can turn a wall don john into a loyal and loving husband are we far off from being able to genetically engineer not only the individual abilities of rodents but also their social structures sub chapter the return of the neanderthals but genetic is do not only want to transform uh, living lineages they aim to re- revive extinct creature as well and not just dinosaurs as in jurassic park a team of russian japanese and korean scientists has recently mapped the genome of ancient mammoth found frozen in the siberian ice they now plan to take a fertilized egg cell of a present day elephant replace the elephantine dna with the reconstructed mammoth dna and implant the egg in the worm of the elephant after about 22 months they expect the first mammoth in 5000 year to be born but why stop at mammoths professor george church of harvard university recently suggested that with the comp- completion of the neanderthal genome project we can now implant reconstructed neanderthal dna into into a sapiens a womb thus producing the first neanderthal child in 30000 year church claimed that he could do the job for a paltry of 30 million dollars several women have already already volunteered to serve as surrogate mothers what do we need neanderthals for some argue that if we could study live neanderthals we could answer some of the most nagging questions about the origin and uniqueness of homo sapiens by comparing a neanderthal to a homo sapiens brain and mapping out where their structures differ perhaps we could identify what biological change produce consciousness as we experience it there's an ethical reason to some have argued that if homo sapiens was responsible for the extinction of the neanderthals it has a moral duty to to resurrect them and having some neanderthals around might be useful lots of industrialists would be glad to pay one neanderthal to to do the menial work of two sapiens but why stop even add neanderthals why not go back to god's drawing board and design a better sapiens the abilities needs and desires of homo sapiens have a genetic basis and the sapiens genome is no more complex than that of wolves and mice in the medium range perhaps in a few decades genetic engineering and other forms of biological engineering might 
enable us to make far reach alterations not only to our physiology, immune system, and life expectancy, but also to our intellectual and emotional capacities. If genetic engineering can create genius wise, why not genius humans? If it can create monogamous walls, why not humans hardwired to remain faithful to their partners? The cognitive revolution that turned Homo sapiens from an insignificant ape into the master of the world did not require any noticeable change in physiology or even in the size and external shape of the sapiens brain. It apparently involved no more than a few small changes to internal brain structure. Perhaps another small change would be enough to ignite a second cognitive revolution, create a completely new type of consciousness and transform homo sapiens into something altogether different true we still don't have the acumen to achieve this but there seem to be no insurmountable technical barrier preventing us from producing superhumans the main obstacles are the ethical and political objections that have slowed down the research on humans and no matter how convincing the ethical arguments may be it is hard to see how they can hold back the next step for long especially if what is at stake is the possibility of prolonging human life indefinitely conquering incurable diseases and upgrading our cognitive and emotional abilities what would happen for example if we develop a cure for alzheimer's disease that as a side benefit could dramatically improve the memories of healthy people would anyone to able to halt the relevant research and when the cure is developed could any law enforcement agency limit it to alzheimer's patient and prevent healthy people from using it to acquire super memories it's unclear whether bioengineering could really resurrect the neanderthalers but it would very likely bring down the curtain on homo sapiens Tinkering with our genes won't necessarily kill us, but we might fiddle with Homo sapiens to such an extent that we would no longer be Homo sapiens. Subchapter Bionic Life There is another new technology which could change the laws of life, cyborg engineering. Cyborgs are beings which combine organic and inorganic parts such as human with bionic hands. In a sense, in sense nearly all of us are bionic these days since our natural senses and functions are supplemented by the devices such as eyeglasses, pacemaker, orthotics, and even computers and mobile phones. We stand poised on the brink of becoming true cyborgs of having inorganic features that are inspirable from our bodies, features that modify our abilities, desires, personalities, and identity. A Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, a USA military research agency, is developing cyborgs out of insects. The idea is to implant electronic chips, de detectors, and processors in the body of a fly or cockroach, which will enable either a human or an atom automatic operator to control the insect's movement remotely and to absorb and transmit information. Such a fly, such a fly could be sitting on the wall at enemy headquarters, eavesdrop on the most secret conversation, and if it is not caught, caught First, by a spider could inform us exactly what the enemy is planning. In 2006, the USA Naval Undersea Warfare Centers reported its intention to develop cyborg shark, declaring NUWC is developing a fish tag whose goal is behavior, behavior control of the host animals by neural implants. The developers hope to identify underwater electromagnetic fields made by submarines and mines by exploiting the natural magnetic detecting cap capabilities of shark which are superior to those of any man-made detectors. Sapiens too are being turned into cyborgs. The, new, the newest generation of hearing aids are sometimes referred to as bionic ears. The device consists of an implant that absorbs sound through a microphone located in the outer part of the ear. The implant filters the sound, identifies human voices and translates them into electric signals that are sent directly to the central auditory nerve and from there to the brain. Retina implant, a government-sponsored German company, is developing a retinal prosthesis that may allow blind people to gain partial vision. It involves implanting a small microchip inside the patient's eye. 
फोटो सेल्स एब्जॉर्ब लाइट फेलिंग फॉलिंग ऑन द आई एंड ट्रांसफॉर्म इट इन टू अलेक्ट्रिकल एनर्जी विच स्टिम्यूलेट्स द इंटैक्ट नर्व सेल्स इन टू द रेटीना द नर्वस इम्पल्स फ्रॉम दीज सेल्स स्टिम्यूलेट द ब्रेन वेयर देयर आर ट्रांसलेटेड इन टू साइट अप एट प्रेजेंट द टेक्नोलॉजी अलाउज पेशेंट टू ओरिएंट एड दैम सेल्फ इन स्पेस आइडेंटिफाई लेटर्स एंड इवन रिकोगनाइज फेसिस जस्सी सोलेवन एंड अमेरिकन इलेक्ट्रीशियन लॉस्ट बोथ आर्म्स अप टू द शोल्डर इन अ जस्सी सोलेवन एंड अमेरिकन इलेक्ट्रीशियन लॉस्ट बोथ आर्म्स अप टू द शोल्डर इन अ 2001 थाउजेंड वन एक्सीडेंट टूडे ही यूज टू बाइनिक आर्म्स कर्टसी ऑफ द रिहेबिलिटेशन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ शिकागो द स्पेशल फीचर ऑफ जेसिस न्यू आर्म इज डैट दे आर ऑपरेटेड बाई थॉट अलोन न्यूरल सिग्नल अराइविंग फ्राम जेसिस ब्रेन आर ट्रांसलेटेड बाई माइक्रो कंप्यूटर इन टू इलेक्ट्रिकल कमांड्स एंड द आर्म्स मूव वैन जैसे वॉन्ट्स टू रेस हिज आर्म ही डज वट एनी नॉर्मल पर्सन अन अनकॉन्शियसली डज एंड द आर्म राइज देयर and the arm rises they these arms can perform a much more limited range of movements than organic arms but they enable jesse to carry out simple daily functions a similar bionic arm has recently been outfitted for audia mitchell and american soldier who lost her arms in a motorcycle accident scientists believe that we will soon have bionic arms that will not only move when willed to move but will also be able to transmit signal back to the brain thereby enabling amputees to regain even the sensation of touch at present these bionic arms are a poor replacement for our organic originals but they have the potential for unlimited development bionic arms for example can be made far more powerful than other organic kin making even a boxing champion feel like a weakling more our bionic arms have the advantage advantage that they can be replaced every few years or detached from the body and operated at a distance scientist at duke university in north carolina have recently de- demonstrated this with rhesus monkeys whose brains have been implanted with electrodes the electrodes gather signals from the brain and transmit them to external devices the monkeys have been trained to control detached bionic arms and legs through thought alone one monkey named aurora learned to thought control a detached bionic arm while simultaneously move her two organic arms like some hindu goddess aurora now has three arms and her arms can be located in different rooms or even cities she can sit in her north Carolina lab scratched her back with one hand scratch her head with a second hand and simultaneously steal a banana in New York and other rhesus monkey adiola won world fame in 2008 when she thought controlled a pair of bionic legs in Kyoto Japan from her North Carolina chair the legs were 20 times adiola's weight locked in syndrome is a condition in which a person loses all or nearly all her ability to move any part of her body while her cognitive abilities remain intact patients suffering from the syndrome have up till now been able to communicate with the outside the world only through small eye movements however a few patient have had brain signal gathering electrodes implanted in their brains efforts are being made to translate such signal not merely into a movement but also into words if the experiment succeed locked locked in patient could finally speak directly with the outside the world and we might we might eventually be able to use the technology to read other people's mind yet of all the projects currently under development the most revolutionary is the attempt to devise a direct two way brain computer interface that will allow computer to read the electrical signal of a human brain simultaneously transmitting signals that the brain can read in turn what if such interfaces are used to directly link a brain to the internet or to directly link several brains to each other thereby creating a sort of interbrain net what might happen to human memory human human consciousness and human identity if the brain has direct access to a collective memory bank in such a situation one cyborg 
could for example retrieve the memories of another not hear about them not read about them in an autobiography not imagine them but directly remember them as if they were his own or her own what happens to concepts such as the self and gender identity when minds become collective how could you know the self or follow your dream if the dream is not in your mind but in some collective reservoir of aspiration such as a cyborg would not longer be human or even organic it would be something completely different it would be so f- fundamentally another kind of being that we cannot even grasp the philosophical psychological or political implications sub chapter another life the third way to change the laws of life is to engineer completely inorganic beings the most obvious example are computer programs and computer viruses that can undergo independent evolution the field of genetic programming is today one of the most interesting spot in the computer science world it tries to emulate the methods of genetic evolution many Many programmers dream of creating a program that could learn and evolve completely independently of its creator. In this case, the programmer would be premium mobile, a first mover, but his creation would be free to evolve in direction neither its maker nor any other human could ever have. And visit A prototype for such a program already exists. It's called a computer virus. As it's spread through the internet, the virus replicates itself million upon millions of times, all the while being chased by predatory antivirus programs and predatory antivirus programs and competing with other viruses for a place in cyberspace one day when the virus replicates itself a mistake occur a, compu- a computerized mutation perhaps the mutation occurs because the human engineer programmed the virus to make occasional random replication mistakes perhaps the mutation was due to a random error if by chance the modified virus is better at evading antivirus program without losing its ability to invade other computer it will spread through cyberspace if so the mutants will survive and reproduce as time goes by cyberspace would be full of new viruses that nobody engineered and that undergo undergo non organic evolution are these living creatures it depends on what you mean by living creature they have certainly been produced by a new evolutionary process completely independent of the laws and limitation of organic evolution imagine another possibility suppose you could bag your brain to a portable hard drive and then run it on your laptop would your laptop be able to think and feel just like a sapiens if so would it be you or someone else what if computer programmers could create an entirely new but digital mind composed of computer code complete with a sense of self consciousness and memory if you ran the ran the program on your computer would it be a person if you deleted it could be you you be charged with murder we might soon have the answer to such question the human brain project founded in 2005 hopes to recreate a complete human brain inside a computer with electronic circuits in the computer emulating neural networks in the brain the project's director has claimed that if funded properly with a within a decade or two we could have an artificial human brain inside a computer that could talk and behave very much as a human does if successful that would mean that after 4 billion years of milling around inside the small world of organic compounds life will suddenly break out into the vastness of the inorganic realm ready to take up shapes beyond our wildest dreams not all scholars agree that the mind works in a manner analogous to today's digital computers and if it doesn't present day computer would not be able to simulate it yet it would be foolish to categorically dismiss the possibility before giving it a try in th- 2013 the project received a grant of 1 billion pounds from the european union sub chapter the singularity presently only a tiny fraction of these new opportunities have been realized yet the world of 2014 is ready a world in which culture is re- realizing itself from the shackles of biology our ability to engineer not merely the world around us but above all the world inside our bodies and mind is developing 
at breakneck speed more and more spheres of activity are being shaken out of their complacent ways lawyers need to rethink issues of privacy and identity government are faced with rethinking matter of health care and equality sports associations and educational institutions need to redefine fair play and achievement pension funds and labor market should readjust to the world in which 60 might be the new 30 they must all deal with the conundrums of bioengineering cyborgs and inorganic life mapping the first human genome required 15 years and 30 billion dollars today you can map a person's a person's dna within a few weeks and at the cost of few hundred dollars the era of uh, personalized medicine medicine that matches treatment to dna has begun the family doctor could soon tell you with greater certainty that you face high risk of liver cancer whereas you need not worry too much about heart attacks she could determine that a popular medications that helps 92% of people is useless useless to you and you should instead take another pill fatal to many people but just right for you there the road to near perfect medicine stand before us however with improvements in medical knowledge will come new ethical conundrums ethicist and legal experts are already wrestling with the thorny issue of privacy as it relates to dna would insurance companies to be entitled to ask for our dna scans and to raise premiums if they discover a genetic tendency to reckless behavior would we be required to fax our dna rather than our cv to potential employers could an employer employer favor a candidate because his dna looks better or could we sue in such cases for genetic discrimination could a company that develops a new creature or a new organ register a, a patent on its dna sequence It is obvious that one can own a particular chicken but can one own an entire species such dilemmas are drafted by the ethical social and political implications of the gilgamesh project and of our potential new abilities to create superhumans the universal declaration of human rights government medical programs throughout the world national health insurance programs and national constitutions worldwide recognized that a human society ought to give all its member fair medical treatment and keep them in relatively good health that was all well and good as long as as medicine was chiefly concerned with preventing illness and healing the sick what might happens one medicine becomes preoccupied with enhancing human abilities would all humans be entitled to such enhanced abilities or would there be a new superhuman elite our late modern world prides itself on recon- recognizing for the first time in history the basic equality of all humans yet it might be poised to create the most unequal of all societies throughout history the upper classes always claim to be smarter stronger and generally better than the underclass they were usually deluding themselves a baby born to a poor peasant family was likely to be as intelligent as the crown prince with the help of new medical capabilities the the pretensions of the upper classes might soon become an objective reality this is not science fiction most science fiction plots describe a world in which sapiens identical to us enjoy superior technology such as light speed space ships and laser guns the ethical and political dilemmas central to these plots are taken from our own world and they merely recreate our emotional and social tensions against a futuristic backdrop yet the real potential of future technologies is to change homo sapiens itself including our emotions and desires and not merely our vehicles and weapons what is a spaceship compared to an eternally young cyborg who does not breed and has no sexuality who can share thoughts directly with other beings whose abilities to focus and remember are a thousand time greater than our own and who is never angry or sad but has emotions and desires that we cannot begin begin to imagine science fiction rarely describes such a future because an accurate description by is by definition incomprehensible producing a film about the life of some super cy- cyborg is akin to produce hamlet for an audience of neanderthals indeed the future master of the world will probably be more different from us than we are from neanderthals whereas we and the neanderthals are at least humans our inheritors will be god like 
Physicist defines a big bang as singularity it is a point at which all the known laws of nature did not exist time too did not exist it is thus meaningless to say that anything excited before the big bang we may be fast approaching a new singularity when all the concepts that give meaning to our world me you men women love and hate will become irrelevant anything happening beyond that point is meaningless to us sub chapter the frankenstein prophecy in 1818 mary shelley published frankenstein frankenstein the story of scientist who creates an artificial being that goes out of control and wrecks havoc in the last two centuries the same story has been told over and over again in countless versions it has become a central pillar of our new scientific mythology at first sight the frankenstein story appears to warn us that if we try to play god and engineer engineer life we will be punished severely yet the story has a deeper meaning the frankenstein myth confronts homo sapiens with the fact that the last days are fast approaching unless some nuclear or ecological catastrophe intervenes so goes the story the pace of techno technological development will soon lead to the replacement of homo sapiens by completely different beings who possesses not only different physiques but also very different cognitive and emotional worlds this is something most sapiens find extremely disconcerting we like to believe that in the future people just like us will travel from planet to planet in fast space ship we don't like to contemplate the possibility that in the future beings with em emotions and identities like ours will not longer exist and our place will be taken by alien life life forms whose abilities dwarf our own we somehow find comfort in the idea that dr frankenstein created a terrible monster home worm we had to destroy in order to save ourselves we like to tell the story that that way because it implies that we are the best of all beings that there never was and never will be something better than us any attempt to improve us will inevitably fail because even if our bodies might be improved you cannot touch the human spirit we would have a hard time swallowing the fact that scientists would engineer spirit engineer spirit as well as bodies and that future doctor doctor frankenstein could therefore create something truly superior to us something that will look at us as condescendingly as we look at the neanderthals we cannot be certain whether today's frankensteins will indeed fulfill this prophecy the future is unknown and it would be surprising if the forecast of the last few pages were realized in full history teaches us that we what seems to be just around the corner may never materialize materialize due to unforeseen barriers and that other unimagined scenarios will in fact come to pass when the nuclear age erupted in the 90s 1940s many forecasts were made about the future nuclear world of the year 2000 When Sputnik and Apollo 11 fired the imagination of the world everyone began predicting that by the end of the century people would be living in space colonies on Mars and Pluto Few of these forecasts came true on the other hand nobody foresaw the internet so don't go out just yet to buy liability insurance to indemnify you against lawsuits filed by digital beings the above fantasies or nightmares are just stimulants for your imagination what we should take seriously is the idea that the next stage of history will include not only tech, uh, technological and organizational transformations but also fundamental transformations in human consciousness and identity and these could be transformations so fundamental that they will call the very term human into question how long do we have no one really knows as already mentioned some say that by 2050 a few humans will already be a mortal less radical forecast peak of the next century or the next millennium yet from the perspective of 70000 years of sapiens history what are a few millennia If the curtain is indeed about to drop on sapiens history we members of one of its final generations should devote some time to answering one last question what do we want to become this question sometimes known as the human enhancement question draw the debates that currently 
pre occupy politicians philosophers scholars and ordinary people after all today's debate between today's religions ideologies nations and classes will in all likelihood disappear along with homo sapiens if our successor indeed function on a different level of consciousness it seems doubtful that christianity or islam will be of interest to them that their social organization could be communist or capitalist or that their genders could be male or female and yet the great debates of the history are important because at least the first generation of these gods would be shaped by the cultural ideas of their human designers would they be created in the image of capital realism of islams or of uh, feminism the answer to this question might send them careening in entirely different directions most people prefer not to think about it even the field of bioethics prefers to address another question what is it forbidden to do is it acceptable to carry out genetic experiments on living human beings on aborted fetuses on stem cells is it ethical to clone sheep and chimpanzees and what about humans all of these are important question but it is naive to imagine that we might simply hit the brakes and stop the scientific project that are upgrading homo sapiens into a different kind of being for these project are inextricably meshed together with the gilgamesh project ask scientist why they study the genome or try to connect a brain to a computer or try to create a mind inside a computer 9 out of 10 times you will get the same standard answer we are doing it to cure diseases and save human lives even though the implications of creating a mind inside a computer are far more dramatic than curing psychiatric illness This is the standard justification given because nobody can argue with it. This is why the Gilgamesh project is the flagship of science. It serves to justify everything science does. Dr. Frankenstein piggybacks on the shoulders of Gilgamesh. Since it is impossible to stop Gilgamesh, it is also impossible to stop Dr. Frankenstein. The only thing we can try to do is to influence the direction scientists are taking. Since we might soon be able to engineer our desire to, perhaps the real question facing us is not what do we want to become, but what do we want to want? Those who are not spoked by this question probably haven't given it an thought afterward the animal dad became a god 70000 years ago homo sapien was still an insignificant animal minding its own business in a corner of africa in the following millennia it transferred itself into the master of entire planet and the terror of ecosystem today it stands on the verge of becoming a god poised to acquire not only eternal youth but also the divine abilities of creation and destruction unfortunately the sapiens regimes on the earth has so far produced little that we can be produce of we have mustered our surrounding increased food production built cities established empires and created far flung trade network but did we decrease the amount of suffering in the world time and again massive increases in human power did not necessarily prove the well being of individual sapiens and usually cause immense misery to other animals in the last few decades we have at last made some real progress as far as the human condition is concerned with the reduction of famine plague and war yet the situation of other animals is deteriorating more rapidly than ever before and the improvement in the lot of humanity is too recent and fragile to be certain of moreover despite the astonishing things that humans are capable of doing we remain unsure of our goals and we seem to be as discontented as ever we have advanced from canoes to galleys to steamships to space shuttles but nobody knows where we are going we are more powerful than ever before but have very little idea that what to do with all that power worse still humans seem to be more irresponsible than ever self made gods with only the laws of physics to keep us company we are accountable to no one we are consequently wreaking havoc on our fellow animals and on the surrounding ecosystem seeking little more than our own comfort and amusement yet never finding satisfaction is there anything more dangerous than dissatisfied and irresponsible goats who don't know what they want